Hi everyone, my name is Steda Rourke. I am a third year PhD student in collaboration with Trinity Centre for Biomedical Engineering and the School of Biochem and Immunology here at Trinity College Dublin. And today I'm going to give you a brief insight into immunometabolism and atherosclerosis, specifically investigating cholesterol crystals as drivers of metabolic reprogramming in macrophages. Now a little bit of background or what you need to know about atherosclerosis. It's the leading cause of heart failure and what happens is you have these atherosclerotic plaques that block oxygen supply to the heart and lead to mast cell death. Macrophages, which are innate immune cells, are actually key drivers of this plaque formation and progression. And more specifically, M1 macrophages, as they're often called, or pro-inflammatory macrophages, are strongly associated with plaque instability and cases of rupture. With regards to immunometabolism, where is this fitting into our story? Well, we know that metabolic reprogramming is actually emerging as a key determinant of cell fate and function. What this means with macrophages is that depending on their phenotype, a pro versus anti-inflammatory phenotype, these cells will actually utilize different metabolic pathways. Pro-inflammatory M1 macrophages typically favor more glycolysis as well as fatty acid synthesis as their key energy sources, undergoing what we often see in cancer cells as this Warburg-like metabolism. Anti-inflammatory or M2 macrophages as they're also called typically favour oxidative phosphorylation and fatty acid oxidation as key energy sources. And this translates to atherosclerosis where we see high levels of glycolysis associated with advanced stages of the disease and high risk plaques, which makes sense as we see a high density of M1 macrophages at these sites. So with all this in mind, our research question is what environmental factors are present in atherosclerotic plaques that are driving this metabolic reprogramming in macrophages and ultimately this M1 phenotype associated with high risk plaques? And our answer, as I gave away in the title of this talk, is actually is actually cholesterol crystals, which are found in both early and advanced stages of atherosclerosis. Now, these cholesterol crystals have actually been proven to drive inflammation in macrophages through the activation of the NLRP3 inflammasome, as indicated by robust secretion of IL-1 beta. And I've been able to build on this data by not only showing are these crystals activating the inflammasome, but they also drive significant expression of M1 associated genes in macrophages, while simultaneously downregulating M2 associated genes. So these cholesterol crystals are in fact capable of driving an M1 phenotype in macrophages that's so heavily associated with high risk plaques and cases of rupture. And this M1 phenotype is associated also with elevated levels of glycolysis, as shown here with seahorse data. And building on the seahorse data, looking at specifically ATP production, we can see that over time with these cholesterol crystal treatments, the majority of ATP being derived in the cell is being derived from glycolysis. So not only is it elevated levels of this metabolic pathway, but the cell is clearly favoring glycolysis as a key energy source over oxidative phosphorylation, which takes place in the mitochondria. In summary of what we learned, we've seen that cholesterol crystals found in atherosclerotic plaques are actually driving this M1 profile in macrophages that's so heavily associated with high risk plaques and cases of rupture. And this M1 profile is accompanied by changes in metabolism to heavily favour high levels of glycolysis over oxidative phosphorylation. So the next few questions to answer is why these changes in glycolysis and what's the link to inflammation? And the bigger picture looking at whether we can track these changes in metabolism in cells as key changes or therapeutic targets in the progression of inflammatory diseases. Thank you so much for listening to my talk and I hope you enjoyed this amongst the many great other talks presented at the IMF channel.